Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol right here. This is a Rex 01 tactical model. So apparently even over in Slovenia where these are made, the tactical trend is catching on. But basically the difference between this and one of the standard Rex Zero pistols is that it has of course the optics mounts which we're going to get into a little bit later on. And it also has a threaded barrel for suppressor use as you guys probably saw in the intro. So uh, first and foremost, for those that don't know anything about this pistol, I definitely recommend you guys check out a couple videos which I'm going to put up here in the corner one of these corners somewhere. Uh, first is gonna be over to Polinar Tactical. They did a uh, plant tour and they sort of show the machining capabilities and all the different equipment that they have over there in the uh, AREX factory. And then also uh, TFB TV did a video where they kind of went through and did a similar thing showing the capabilities they have over in Slovenia to make these pistols. It's pretty impressive stuff. So definitely check those out. And what you'll see is that basically these folks have been making military components for all different types of stuff from ammo, from firearms, from missiles, all different types of stuff over there in that plant. So they're not just like a new upstart company that's going to disappear in a year and there's not going to be any support, but they just started exporting these pistols to America probably in the last couple of years. And like many of you, I watched the military arms channel torture test. He did this video running it through the gauntlet and it did exceptionally well. And that's of course peaked my interest and piqued a lot of your interest as well. And I kept getting tons of requests to review one of these ARX pistols. So I finally picked one up from the folks over at the Fine Group who are the importers of these. And uh, I've had it in for probably, shoot, two months now and put a ton of rounds through it. And uh, glad to report we've had a grand total of zero issues with it at all, uh, whether suppressed, unsuppressed, regardless of ammo we put through it, it's worked really well. well. But what we're gonna do next is uh, let the dogs take a look at it, of course, make sure they approve, and then um, head out and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this cold hammer forge barrel. Got a few different loads to try out in the pistol. Uh, up first is going to be the 115 grain Minuteman Munitions Total Metal Jacket load. So practice load, but we've had good accuracy from it in the past. Target down range at 25 yards. Rest here is the CTK Precision Rest. And of course we have the RMR on there. And uh, we're going to see how we can do uh, with this little pistol here. So let's see what it will do. Not too bad. I'm actually going to go turn my target because I have some grass blocking uh, the bottom ones there. So I'm going to move it and come right back. Next up, we have some 147 grain. This is the uh, Spear Gold Dot G2 round. So heavy for caliber stuff and we will see how it does. <laughs> All right, not too shabby either. Now, uh, last load in there is gonna be some uh, Federal HST. This is their 124 grain plus P load. Uh, I know this is a very popular carry and defensive load here. And uh, we'll see how this Rex likes it. Well, that one certainly was noticeably warmer though. But one thing, the groups crept together. It's never good. Anyway, let's check them out. I went and watched the tape and circled which rounds belong to which group. So we got that squared away. First up was the Minuteman munition stuff. We're right at 1.75 inches on that one. Then we had the gold dot, spear gold dot stuff. It opened up, didn't like that load for whatever reason. Right at two and a quarter inches there. And then the HST 124 grain plus P. That one was the winner for sure. Right at an inch and a half with that one. So either way, those are all respectable group for a pistol at 25 yards. With the accuracy out of the way, we'll check out the details of the pistol. First off, it does come in a lockable hard case with custom foam. And uh, of course we have the pistol here. I have the RMR mounted, which is why it's not 
uh, sitting flush there. It comes with two 20 round mags. And while we're on that subject, uh, one of the fears I had, I guess you could say, or worries rather, uh, was getting replacement magazines for these. Um, didn't know how that would work out. But again, it comes with two 20 rounders. But they also sell uh, some 18 rounders and several places are carrying these. I picked these up over at Gun Mag Warehouse. So um, if you look around online, you're going to see plenty of different companies that are actually selling mags for the A-Rex, which is definitely a good sign showing that this pistol is definitely gaining some popularity. So the other thing I wanted to show you is that it does ship with uh, four different optics plates. So that's what these are in here. And basically you have plates for uh, the Triticon RMR, which is what I have on there, of course. And it does come with this one on there. So that way it looks nice and flush and smooth. Um, but you have the Triticon one, the Seymour sights, the uh, Shield J-Point mount, and then the uh, EOTech Mini Dot, uh, which is also uh, compatible with Vortex, Burris, Doctor, Insight, and uh, probably some others out there as well. So most of the red dot uh, sights that are out there on the market, it will fit them just fine with these adapter plates. Moving on to the actual pistol itself, we'll clear it first, I guess. And uh, one thing I should point out here is when dropping magazines, there can be an issue uh, with this particular pistol. So it's kind of twofold. So number one, the grip is relatively large. Um, it's not huge or anything, but it's not small either. So with me, even having large hands, I can't activate that mag release without sort of turning it in my hand a little bit and rotating it. Now, one thing to be cautious of is that the magazine release is ambidextrous. And when you actually push it from one side, it comes through on the other sides. If you guys can see that motion there, not sure how apparent that is, but you're actually pushing it across. That's kind of how it works. Now, the, the issue you can have there is even with me, I can, if I'm gripping the pistol like this, let's say, and I go to push it, it's meeting resistance against either my hand or my finger or something on the backside. So I've seen a lot of folks online say the magazine release is, is hard to push. I mean, it is, but I think a lot of people don't realize that they're actually pushing it against their own hand when they do that. So uh, just something to point out there. But we do have, again, the magazine 20 rounders, two 20 rounders that come with it. These are made by Metgar. So that's always a good thing in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna get into probably the only part of this pistol I really don't like uh, right off the bat here, and that's gonna be these grips. So the grips have a little bit of texturing down here on the bottom, but up top and uh, up here on the back strap, it is smooth and uh here in uh, carolina it's summertime as i've been reviewing this pistol it's super hot hands are sweaty and the pistol's bouncing around in your hand a little bit which i don't like now uh, another part of that that adds to that is that they have vertical serrations here on the front strap of the pistol i've said this in several reviews but i i would prefer companies to do horizontal ones so that way it gives you a little bit of resistance when the gun is recoiling in your hand. Now, uh, this is easily remedied. There are aftermarket grips out there. I know Hogue makes a Piranha set, which is exactly what I'm gonna get as soon as this uh, camera's off and I'm done with the review. I'm gonna throw those on there and fix that uh, easy as pie, but that's just something to point out. The grips are a little bit on the slippery side for me. Of course, people on the internet say that this thing is just a sort of poor man's SIG P226. I tend to disagree with that. We'll get into that in a little bit. But um, the controls are sort of a hybrid between a SIG and a CZ99. I did a review of that pistol and I have a review of the SIG as well for you guys if you're interested to check out. But um, basically right now we have the pistol in single action with the safety on. The safety itself is ambidextrous. It's very easy to actuate either way. It clicks in positively, so good on them for that. But with the safety on, you can manipulate the pistol in any way you want. So say you wanted to load the pistol with the safety on, you absolutely can do that. Uh, say you got it loaded and you wanted to decock it, you can do that with the safety on. And then at this point, you could, if you wanted to fire, put it down into double action, engage like that, put it back into single action, and carry it cocked and locked. That's an option as well. So it's pretty cool in that regard. And one of the comments uh, I kept getting a lot when I posted pictures on social media was this decocker. A lot of people thought that when they were sending the round home, or the slide home rather, which it does that as well, they would accidentally decock it and go into double action. Well, it's just not so, it's mechanically impossible. The way this switch is designed, no matter how hard I push, you can see my finger is turning white. I am clamping down on that thing. It will not go into decock until I release it. You guys probably heard that click and then I hit it again. So no matter how hard you do it, you will not drop the hammer when you're releasing the slide. Getting into the trigger, of course, it is double action or single action like we just mentioned. So in double action, the trigger here is about 12 pounds on my scale. Sometimes it goes a little over that, sometimes it's a little bit under it, but uh, it's smooth the whole way through, but it's definitely heavy. I mean, a 12 pound trigger in double action is nothing to sneeze at, but you absolutely can get hits with it, you know, typical self-defense distances, because it's not creepy at all. It's pretty smooth, breaks right towards the back, which I know some people don't like. I personally like it because it minimizes over travel. 
but there you go, you can see it breaking. And then of course, in single action, it's excellent. In single action, it breaks right at five pounds on my scale every time. You'll see the reset here, very positive, very tactile. And then to move it back from the reset, you have a little bit of movement and it's gonna break right here. Very crisp, five pounds on the dot on my trigger. So nothing wrong with it at all. The sights that come on the tactical model here are raised up, of course, to co-witness with most of your optics out there. Uh, these ones co-witness perfectly with the Trijicon RMR, for those wondering. They are three-dot sights. They're steel. They have a nice uh, black finish on there. It seems pretty durable. It has a nice ledge here on the rear. So if you wanted to do one-handed manipulations, of course, if you didn't have an optic on there, you could do so uh, just fine. But definitely seeing my quality sights. Three-dot sight, a little bit of a wider than normal uh, notch here in the rear, but in terms of shooting it, picking it up, no issues at all. We have serrations there on the front as well to cut down on glare. So overall, very good sights for stock sights. Continuing forward on the pistol, we do have front serrations for folks who like to do press checks. You can certainly do that until your heart's content. And then on the bottom of the frame here, we do have a 1913 rail on there, true to spec, and uh, we use several different lights throughout this review and have had no issues with it at all. It seems to be very well made. And speaking of the frame, it is made from uh, one piece of bar stock aluminum, 7075 T6 aluminum. And then they put a uh, steel locking block in there, which you're gonna see here in just a second. So it is an aluminum frame with a steel locking block. And the slide here is made of one piece of uh, bar stock steel. It's machined down from that. And then they uh, put a nitro carburizing finish on there. They also put the same on the barrel. It's a uh, surface treatment as well as a finish. So it's gonna give you good corrosion resistance, good durability, good Rockwell hardness, all the stuff that you want on a slide. To take down the pistol is very simple. So basically what we're going to do is push up here on this uh, slide lock and it's going to lock our slide to the rear. Of course, we'll make sure the pistol is empty. At this point, we're going to rotate the takedown lever down 90 degrees and we can just let our slide go and it should come right off. And uh, I'm going to remove this thread protector here on the barrel because you're going to need it to take it down. And I should point out, it does actually come with a thread protector, unlike the PT-26 or many HK pistols. So that's sort of a nice bonus there as well. You see the barrel has a nice crown on there and the threads are half inch by 28. So it's going to fit uh, most of the suppressors out there, at least in the US anyway. I'll take our barrel out. And that barrel there is 4.9 inches. It is cold hammer forged has a nice wide mouth here on it uh, for feeding hollow points. We've had zero issues uh, feeding anything with this pistol. Um, it eats it up there just fine. And you can see there on the uh, frame, there's that steel locking block that they actually put in there and the feed ramp sort of extends down into that just to make sure that round's gonna feed up into there. But you can look in and see really nice machine work there. Um, very nice fit and finish overall. When you run the slide on there, it feels very tight. It's not sloppy or loose in any way. And our guide rod here is made of steel. Looking over on the inside of the slide, not too much to get excited about. There's a little bit of a machine chatter there up front. Obviously it affects performance, not at all, but um, you can see there overall looks good on the inside. Now for the comparison with the 226, I picked this one uh, because it has a threaded barrel, so it's probably most similar to this pistol in terms of size, so we'll show you guys that. But uh, basically, in terms of size, it's pretty much exactly the same. If we kind of line these up here with the end of the slide and the frame, I mean, it's pretty much spot on, as you guys can see. It's, it's right on the money. And in terms of the slides, you guys can see how those look there. Again, pretty much exactly the same in terms of size, but the big difference is the controls in my opinion. And then the cost, of course, is also a big difference, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Um, but the Rex, of course, has the safety, which the SIG doesn't have. Typical SIGs, most SIGs, some do. And then this lever right here. So on this, this is acting as your slide lock, slide release, as well as your decocker. Here on the SIG, of course, it is just acting as a decocker and they have a separate lever here for the uh, slide release. So that is the big difference in terms of controls. They're not the same really at all. We hit most of the important issues, but there's a couple I left out. First off, they uh, make this in black, as you guys see it here, of course, as well as flat dark earth. Um, and for those that don't know, the Rex line of pistols is the standard ones, which is basically, like I said, minus the optic mount and minus the threaded barrel, but they also make a compact pistol. I believe it holds uh, 15 rounds. I'm not 100% sure on that, but there are different models available and there are several different color options available. And in terms of price, this one is the most expensive of all of them. This one here, I believe is $780 or $781 over at the uh, Fine Group website. I'll put a link down below for all you guys. And then the standard ones, I believe are $618. So um, pretty good size jump for the extra machining and of course the threaded barrel. But if you want to run an optic, I highly recommend you go this route. So 
uh, basically what do I think of the pistol overall? Overall, I love it. Um, I really do. The ergonomics are very similar to the P226. That's absolutely true. I'm a fan of P226 ergos. It feels good in the hand. It feels very solid. Um, like I said, we've had no reliability issues. The accuracy was good. Um, really, all in all, it's a very impressive pistol, especially for the money. You know, if you look at what a SIG costs in terms of MSRP, um, and I think that's what a lot of people are going to be considering, you know, if they're picking up this style pistol, do they want the SIG or do they want something like this? Um, this one's significantly cheaper. Um, significantly so you're gonna save a few hundred dollars and like I said I, I don't think the A-Rex company is going anywhere I think these pistols are gonna just be more and more popular here in the US um, at this point I don't think I've seen a negative review of them um, everyone who's uh, posting on the forums and online and YouTube and stuff seems to have good things to say uh, the only thing I don't like like I said is it's a little bit slippery around here but that again is easily remedied. We're gonna throw those hog grips on there and fix that here real quick. But all in all, really like it. Uh, I wasn't surprised, because again, I've seen the reports out there, but with a new company and a new pistol, I never know, but I definitely, definitely like this gun, and hopefully I'll be reviewing some of the other models down the road. But if you guys have any questions about the pistol or anything else I discussed in the review, you can always post those down below in the comments section. You can also post those over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.